So friends, remember last week when a judge in Colorado ruled, found, concluded that Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection? Well, turns out Donald Trump doesn't much care for that ruling. And there has been a development in the Colorado case. So friends, remember how just last week a Colorado judge, Judge Sarah Wallace, ruled in a case that had been brought to see whether Donald Trump should be disqualified under the 14th Amendment from serving as president again. And you may recall that in that case, Judge Wallace made two really important findings or rulings. One, she found that based on the evidence, based on the testimony from the witnesses, Donald Trump absolutely engaged in an insurrection on January 6th 2021, but she also ruled that, two, that doesn't necessarily disqualify him from holding office in the future. It doesn't disqualify him from being president again. It doesn't disqualify him from heading up the very democracy he tried to end. Doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense, does it, friends? Well, now, predictably, both parties, both litigants in that suit have appealed Judge Wallace's rulings. Headline, both sides appeal ruling that Trump can stay on Colorado ballot despite insurrection finding. Both a liberal group that sought to disqualify Donald Trump and the former president himself on Monday night appealed the Colorado judge's ruling that Trump engaged in insurrection on January 6, 2021, but can stay on the state's ballot. The appeals were filed with the Colorado Supreme Court. The ruling by District Court Judge Sarah Wallace on Friday, which said Trump is not covered by the Constitution's ban on insurrectionists holding office, was the latest in a series of defeats for the effort to end Trump's candidacy with Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. A group in Michigan has filed an appeal with that state's Supreme Court. The constitutional provision has only been used a handful of times since the years after the Civil War. It was created to prevent former Confederates from returning to government positions. The group Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, or CRU, filing on behalf of a group of Republican and unaffiliated Colorado voters, argued that Wallace was wrong in ruling that it's not clear the provision was intended to apply to presidents. The section prevents those who took an oath to support the Constitution from serving in Congress, the Electoral College, or as an officer of the United States. It does not specifically mention the presidency. Based on common sense alone, the appeal states, there would be no reason to allow presidents who lead an insurrection to serve again while preventing low-level government workers who act as foot soldiers from doing so. And it would defy logic to prohibit insurrectionists from holding every federal or state office except the highest and most powerful in the land. You know, friends, it doesn't really pass the common sense test, does it? To say that a president who was found by a court after a trial to have engaged in an insurrection against the United States, to just have free reign to run for president again, to potentially become president again. So, you know, he could just do it all over again. You know, maybe this time he will successfully end our democracy. So friends, this is probably a good time and a good vehicle to talk about the ins and outs of appeals, how appeals actually worked. So there are two rulings by Judge Wallace that are being appealed, one by Crew, the organization that brought the suit to try to disqualify Trump, and the other by Donald Trump himself. So Donald Trump is appealing the judge's factual findings and conclusions that he in fact engaged in an insurrection. 
Donald Trump doesn't like that so much. And Crew is appealing her ruling, her conclusion that, yeah, the 14th Amendment, Section 3, disqualifies everybody else who engages in an insurrection against the United States after taking an oath to support the United States, except the president. I'm going to say it again, makes no damn sense. But so Crew is appealing that part of the judge's ruling. Here is where the standards of review come into play. What do I mean by standards of review? When cases get appealed, there are different standards that are applied by the appellate court judges depending on the nature of the finding or the ruling that's being appealed. Stick with me here. This is a little bit of a Team Justice Law School class. So factual determinations made by a judge after a trial has been conducted are generally um, afforded great deference on appeal by the appellate court judges. And we'll talk about why that is in a minute. However, legal conclusions based on the facts that the judge found are generally not given very much deference. In fact, legal rulings can often um, have what's called a de novo standard of review applied. De novo means from the beginning, right? Right from the start, afresh, anew. So very little deference is given to legal conclusions, but lots of deference is given to factual conclusions. Why is that so? Well, mainly it has to do with the fact that the, the judge, as the finder of fact in the case, had the opportunity to see all of the witnesses testify, to, among other things, assess their credibility. Because when you read testimony on a cold page, on a transcript of a trial court proceeding, you know, it, it reads just one way. So let me use a basic example. If it was an eyewitness um, that was testifying about whether he did or didn't see the defendant commit the crime, you know, the witness could testify along these lines. Uh, I saw the defendant commit the crime, or the witness could testify, I saw the defendant commit the crime. Those two bits of testimony, same words, are going to read the same on the cold page. But as you can see, the, um, the credibility, the believability of the witness, depending on how he or she testifies, can be received very differently by the finder of fact, in this case, the judge, Judge Wallace. So ordinarily, because the finder of fact, the judge, is in the best decision to make credibility determinations and decide how much weight to give each piece of evidence, um, the appellate court judges will typically give great deference to the factual conclusions and determinations of the, of the trial court judge. But when it comes to legal issues, well, the demeanor of the witnesses who testified doesn't really matter. So the appellate court judges can take that legal issue like, okay, what is the true meaning of the 14th Amendment's disqualification clause once it has been established as a matter of fact that Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection while he was president of the United States. That legal issue will be reviewed de novo from the beginning, right? With very little deference being given to Judge Sarah Wallace's legal conclusion. So, you know, that's why this appeal could be perilous for Donald Trump because it seems like Judge Wallace's factual determination after a trial, after several witnesses testified that Donald Trump absolutely engaged in an insurrection against the United States will be affirmed on appeal. The judges are likely to accept those findings and not disturb them. But the legal issue is the one that could spell real trouble for Donald Trump. If the appellate court reviewing Judge Wallace's legal conclusion about the inapplicability of the 14th Amendment's disqualification clause to the president, if they disagree with that, 
Well, then they can hold, they can rule that, no, he is disqualified under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, and he may not be on the Colorado ballot. Now, friends, I don't pretend to know how they're going to decide that legal issue. I do predict that regardless of which way they decide it, it may end up going up to the United States Supreme Court one way or another. Because if Donald Trump loses and he is disqualified in the opinion of the Colorado Supreme Court from running for president, again, you can bet he's going to try to appeal that up to the Supreme Court. Don't know if the Supreme Court would accept review or refuse to accept the case for review. I'm guessing they would accept it for review. But if the appellate court affirms Judge Wallace's ruling and decides, yes, she was right, the 14th Amendment's disqualification clause doesn't really apply to the president. Well, then Crew, the organization that brought the suit, could certainly appeal it up to the Supreme Court. And again, we'd have to see whether the Supreme Court would accept review of that case. Um, you know, friends, you've heard me say before, I am not a betting man. I am not a high roller. You know, one dollar is my betting limit. You know what? I'm not even putting 50 cents on how this appeal may be resolved by the Colorado Supreme Court or how it might be resolved by the, uh, the United States Supreme Court, assuming they take the case for review. But here is one thing that I have been saying for quite some time. I don't think the Supreme Court is all that anxious to do anything, issue any ruling that would facilitate Donald Trump getting back into the Oval Office for another go-round at trying to kill our democracy. And the reason I say I don't think the Supreme Court will rule in a way that facilitates that is because Donald Trump has said, among other things, he will terminate the Constitution if he's reelected. And there's one thing that an aspiring dictator like Donald Trump has absolutely no interest in, that is a Supreme Court. So, yeah, I think a, a certain block of the Supreme Court justices will vote in a way that will, you know, preserve their supreme status. You know, they'll vote from a place of self-preservation. And I don't think they will facilitate Donald Trump, an aspiring dictator, returning to the Oval Office because a dictator could very easily put the Supreme Court out of business. And I think the Supreme Court, a handful of justices, really love their supreme status. They've pretty much proven, particularly by their financial entanglements and conflicts of interest and refusal to adopt an actual legitimate uh, code of ethics, um, I think they're going to protect their own supreme status at pretty much any cost. But friends, we will certainly keep an eye on this one, and I suspect we're going to hear in fairly short order that the Colorado Supreme Court has ordered briefs to be submitted in the appeal, and we'll set the case for oral argument, and um, we'll keep on top of it. Let's hope that the Colorado Supreme Court not only accepts Judge Wallace's findings, factual findings that Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection, let's hope they revisit her ruling about the 14th Amendment not disqualifying Donald Trump, and perhaps they will conclude to the contrary that the 14th Amendment absolutely disqualifies a president who engaged in insurrection against the United States from ever being president again.